really quite comfortable with everything. I'm sort of, I don't know, I just seem to have, have kind of found a, a bit of a groove, I think, maybe. And, you know, not feeling hungry at all with what I'm eating and just really enjoying it. I was very proud with a part of myself. Um, the other day I was, I, I was um, oh, waiting for the washing downstairs and I had the cat downstairs with me and we don't let him out very much. Mm -hmm. So he was, you know, downstairs walking around. And I thought, oh, I could actually go for a walk around the unit. So I did. I did about 25 minutes just walking around waiting for the washing to finish and I thought geez I would never have thought of that before hey so I was quite proud of myself. that is huge that is absolutely yeah. huge yeah mm. so I was I'm, I'm sort of doing a lot more and I'm feeling lighter and feeling really like I'm getting somewhere you know and it's mm. not it's not stressful at all yeah. so that's really really good mm. That's cool. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm loving it. Love mm. it. And so we've had good health, we've had good thoughts, we've had good timings for everything this week. Yeah, yeah. Look, honestly, health um health has been great and as I say, you know, sort of walking every day and um yeah, I've been meditating as well. So that's been really good, sort of starting my day off and finishing my day off with meditation I'm doing Espen's meditation so that's you know it's just really kind of work and working out and, and the only thing is I've really got to get my water in which I've started again today which sounds pretty sad but I'm just one of these people I just can't I, okay no I need to change my language mm -hmm. around that I think um, I haven't so found an enjoyable container to put my water in yet yeah, that's, it. that's it I've got this big blue one on my. I've got. It, I'm holding it up, but um, yes. I've got a big blue one that I take with me everywhere now. Um, yes. And even if I don't drink at all, I bring it with me everywhere because I know that I've always got enough, and then I've always got enough for other people too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Love it. It's a big one, so. Um, awesome. Yeah, I, I've got one of those ones that like takes I think two point six liters or something, and it's it's one of those. It's a clear plastic like a BPA free one, but um, yeah, it's got the handle on it and everything. And I like, I'm like, oh, that just is a bit too daunting for me, I think. So I've got some little, little ones that I've, I've, I've got two that I took to work today. I've got through one. So that was a start. That's a great start. That's an awesome yep. start. So tomorrow you'll take it with you again? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, the cool thing about having the one big bottle is you get to then measure Yes, how much you're drinking. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, look, I know, and I've just got to get my head around that. I need to do that just for my own health, you know. I mean, it's yep. the most important thing. And I know that, you know, sort of when you when you do drink your water that you you feel full longer and all that sort of stuff. And it's it just really, I, I don't know what the block is, but but I'm going to work on it. <laughs> You're doing well. That's all it is. Is it's just literally we're not looking at doing everything right now. We're not looking at everything no. being perfect tomorrow. It's just progression. Yes, yes. Awareness absolutely. and progression. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yes, we're, mm. we're getting there. We're getting there. So yeah, no. Look, and, and I was up last night, as you probably saw, because we were talking to each other. Yes. Um, and I actually listened, I was listening to one of the, uh, the the Kiwi guys that interviewed Dr. Cam. Oh, yes. Um, I think it was one of the first ones. And geez, that was interesting. He's he's so knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. And I was just thinking, wow, that kind of, I mean, you know, he's he knows what he's talking about and it all just makes sense. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm, I'm committing to doing the, you know, sort of one a day with with the um, with your links. Awesome. I only worked out the other day that, like, doing it on the phone just wasn't working. So I've got mm -hmm. to actually do it through the computer. I don't know. I must be a little bit um, technically challenged or something. Mm. But but um, yeah, I haven't sort of transferred it across. Like you know how you suggested putting it on your notes and then just going in and. Well, I haven't done that yet. I haven't been able to do that, but I've I've 
got I've got to the stage where I've copied them all out and then it's now just get you know to get them onto the phone so I've got them in the car when I'm driving so I just send them to myself via messenger oh that's a good idea yeah so I've always got them in messenger no matter where I am yay that's a good idea I didn't even <laughs> there you go see done there perfect go. done ski awesome Absolutely. So is, there, is, is anyone else on tonight? Um, Jess said she was coming on and uh, Mandy said she m was going to try. Yep. Um, let me just have a look. I'm sure they will, but the recording will still be good and I'm going to go yep. through a couple of really cool bits tonight, which will be yep. awesome. awesome. Um, so this week for our Guardians and Diplomats, our priorities are uh, place for the Guardian. Yep. How did you find that? Uh, surroundings. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on a bit of a declutter at the moment now. I'm awesome. needing, needing to get my place organised and mm -hmm. decluttered. So. And what does that look like? What, what's your plan of attack? Okay, plan of attack is actually this weekend I've got... Um, my, uh, I've got my ex coming over, and he's he, they're coming. They're, I've, I've got a team of people coming to help me, so we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna knock it over this weekend, and actually actually get things sorted so that I've got not so much crap around me. Because that's mm -hmm. that's me. I'm I'm very much a I'm not a, I'm not a hoarder, but I do like to keep things that remind me of police, you know, places and people. Mm -hmm. so, I love that. Yeah. But, so, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit too much. <laughs> very interesting that you um, have utilised week four, which is place, but you've yes. interlaced it with so much about social. Yes. Bringing together your tribe. Yes. So it should be a very nurturing, evolutionising yes. weekend. Well, that's, yeah, that's true. Mm. That's very true. And just some healthy, good food. You know, yep. if they're there for lunch, then you can do the meat thing. And then if you're there for dinner, you could be like, hey, let's try doing some Vento stuff. Yes, yes. Well, that, well, he's very much into the veggie, veggie stuff as well at the moment. So, yeah, I think, okay. I think that'll work out this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm actually yeah. going to be driving again um, Friday and Saturday night. So I'm getting back into that groove now. Like I said last night, my, my timings are not going to be really ideal but mm -hmm. until you know for this for the short term i am going to be a little bit out of kilter with that but you know it's what i've got to do so it's all good perfect well it's, that's it is brilliant in what it is it really is mm. um and it's yes. about just managing the small wins around it like what are the, the small things that you can be doing to align a little more to where you're at is it if you're going to bed super super late are you able to sleep in you know, yes. yes. Um, it's about ensuring your food timing. So food is above exercise and and just below social for you. So if you're working through the night, you're socialising. Yes, that's right. But and that's why it's not a stress for me, and mm. I love it. But mm -hmm. yeah, the sleep. So I mean, you know, I do get to sleep, but that's only sort of like then I'm sleeping during the day, and that kind of it's not really conducive to especially to my um to my health type but mm -hmm. also it doesn't does it sorry darling this is me just i'm just parking the car now so i'll be going upstairs but yeah Next i'm yeah i'm definitely um i've got to look at everything again with with you know sort of my where i'm where i'm actually working and all that sort of stuff so it's going to be a big couple of months over the next couple of months, but you know, sort of for the moment, I, I feel like I've kind of got my everything under control when it comes to eating, which is a good thing. And that's sort of something that I've always struggled with. What's set you off in the past with, with the eating, do you think? Oh, look, just, just being, um, you know, depressed or unhappy, you know, sort of something, oh, I can, I, you know, so sort of just a, a feeling of whatever, whatever has set me off, and I just feel like bawling my eyes out, and 
I go for chocolate. That's that just comes to my head straight away. You know, mm. I need I need to go and buy chocolate, and it usually gets accompanied with wine. Not that I drink much, but you know, that's that's sort of what happens. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. And so, do you see how looking at the priorities for each of the different health types and how you've been instructed each week? Um, yep. Can you see how maybe in the past, past certain things might have been contributing to the current those states that you were in? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've you know the situations. I've, I'm my mind has obviously you know, food is a comfort for me, um, especially when I'm, you know, not happy with myself. And of course, that's where the the horrible, um, you know, the, the catch-22 situation happens where, okay, you go off your plan, you go off your diet, and you think, oh, screw it, you know, I've done that. And what's the point? And it's all too hard. And then you just go from, you know, it just keeps going round and round and round. But I think with like, you know, having <laughs> having the group, um, and also like uh, the app is just amazing because it just keeps, res- you know, sort of reminding me about things and, and just sort of the little, little sort of pop-ups on the phone. They really, mm. you know, sort of help me during the day. Which awesome. is good. Yeah. It's kind of like a reminder that, yep. you know, hang on, we're doing something together. So you need to be a little bit more mindful. I think that's yeah. what, yeah, that's what sort of is is different mm. yeah. do you love that that's perfect that's yeah that's oh, that accountability. I love, I, yeah abs- that's it that's exactly mm. right the accountability mm. is there even though it's just a phone you know but it's still it's good it's really good it's perfect so mm. can you see how maybe understanding your social area and is there elements of your social life or social interactions that were maybe not as clear or not as understood or connected as they are now? Is there anything changed in that side of things? Um, well, in the last week, I've, I've certainly, um, I've, well, it's been a week now. I've, I don't have um, Charlotte with me at the moment. And now I'm making, like, I'm I'm sort of actually making a point of going to see her with her dad. I mean, he's not, they're only around the corner. Yep. So I'm sort of like, it's not as if I'm, you know, miles away and whatever. But I make a point of every day going there and just, you know, chatting with her and watching her do her, her, um, her workout, like her weightlifting and that. And, you know, just sort of being a part of that. And I think... Um, I think, Shana, with with the social thing, whilst I I have a lot of interaction with people outside of the home, there's usually just the two of us in the house, and there's not like I mean we're in a comfortable posi- you know comfortable sort of environment, and just being around each other is enough. So there's not a lot of over over the top you know sort of talking and whatever else. We're just comfortable doing our own thing and you know having dinner together or whatever yeah but but it's funny i'm just thinking about this you know that that really we we um my the social side of it is more external but now that she's not with me at home at the moment i'm finding that i'm i'm looking forward to going and seeing her while she's with the dad sort of thing so I kind of wish I'd started this, you know, before because I really, mm-hmm. I've got, I've got the, it's not that I'm, I'm sort of un, not accountable anymore. I really am. And more so, yeah. but, but, um, you know, whereas I think we probably took advantage, like took each other for granted. I think that's what I'm trying to say, you know, easily now, done. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So now it's more of, it's more of a social thing. Yeah. So yeah that's it that's and it makes it, it takes away the expectations and the obligations and allows it to be more about appreciation rather than yes. um, controlling or expecting of certain behaviors it's now more about the appreciation of the small the small finite details of who yeah. the person is and what they're about yeah yeah no that's 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 so true mm. wow well, that's beautiful thank you for that's, sharing that that's been like a bit of an aha moment for me <laughs> well no. it's, it's 
It's so true because, um, and I know that within your profile, there are statements that speak about, and it's quite common for, for guardians and diplomats to go into a state of... Um, Hibernation. We, well, yeah, that too. That too. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We yeah. hold expectations so high of ourselves, and because we're constantly striving to try and achieve things, when we feel like we're not going to achieve them, we'll shut down. When we feel like we're not yes. going to get our dopamine hit, we will... We'll, we will self-sabotage so that we don't have to go through with the process so that we can avoid the inevitable pain that we're expecting. Yes, yes, yes. That's so true. And so yeah. when we can find ways of, of removing that expectation and obligation, we can suddenly start having this feeling of freedom. Um, but sometimes people expect that freedom. A lot of us expect that freedom to come from negligence and just letting go and letting everything be free. But what we can... Yes what hopefully you guys are beginning to understand is that when we take the time to create the plan, the flow and um, create space for ourselves to become um, in flow, like at first it feels like rigidity and feels like we're creating too much structure for ourselves, but within the structure is the safety and is the freedom. Yes. Yes. Totally. When, when we have the clear path, because we're all logical pattern seekers, it's um it's very important for us to have this clear defined path of where we're going, so that we know where our little points are that we can win, that we can self analyze, that we can check in, and then we can keep striving forward, or we can change our trajectory and keep going again. So it's, yep. it's just knowing that, not being too hard on yourself. You don't have to get mm. from point A to point B right now. You can take your time and evaluate each step of the mm. way and, and check in with yourself. Um, a perfect uh, experience or perfect um, metaphor for this or story for this would be this morning. Um, last night I was all driving around going, right, what have I got on tomorrow? How am I going to shape tomorrow? How am I going to shape tomorrow? And things yeah. happened. I got a bit busy and didn't get time to actually plan out my morning. And so I woke up and I was full of anxiety because I was like, where, what, what's going to be the best thing for me to do? Oh shit. Yeah. I have no plan. Yep. And my, my day was in a funk all day. Oh no. So it really just comes to yes. the point of me remembering and going, wow, Shana, as much as it might seem kind of cool to fly by the seat of your pants. Yes. Yes. To, ensure that you're going to have points of review at which you can reboot yourself and, and, and achieve and pat your back and, and know where you're going within the plan. There is freedom. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So um, morning or night, it really is important to make sure that we are making time to make the plan. Then once yes. we have the plan, we can become fun and spontaneous around that. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's very true. And look, honestly, the um, you know, sort of the more I think about it, the the it, it is like a freedom. It is like a freedom, like a, that I'm feeling at the moment. In that, I I can choose where to go and what to do, mm -hmm. and 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 but it is within a plan. And I, I really, I think that's what I'm really enjoying is that. I'm not, I'm not stressing out about things, whereas beforehand I would have been, you know, thinking, oh, you know, I've gone off the diet or whatever, because it's not a diet, it's going to be my, my life plan. And there's no stress in getting, you know, sort of if, if, if I'm not perfect for like a day, it doesn't mm. matter. And that's, and, and not being hard on yourself is, is really something that, you know, I'm, I'm starting to to be a lot more accepting of, you know, what I'm doing. So I'm not, I'm not stressing about things. I'm not stressing as much about, you know. And how much this. lighter does that feel? Yeah, it's great. It's really great. And, and look, this is fascinating. Just how, I don't understand how they even got into this, you know, sort of where they found that, you know, this, this, all, all of this is so interrelated. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. that, that that um interview last night that i was listening to was like whoa how the hell they even got into the you know the, the ideas of, of how to connect the dots mm. and you know and, and, and this, is really so this is why it's so important and this is why it's so important to be on these lives is because you get to then interact and the story develops and you, mm. you then interact and say a certain thing that will then trigger the next thing that will then trigger the next thing. And as you're yes. speaking, I can then see the patterns of what's going on in the person and in their environment. Yes. Um, and you can really get a little clearer on, on uh, the responses of the person, of the individual, um, not just the health type. Like I can sit here and, and, and 
and, and put it into little segments of each health type but you can get specific to the person and, and understanding yeah. their pattern and their sequence yep yep so there's been a lot of stress coming up for a lot of people and i want to quickly share something yep. um those that have done this course with me before would know this video well but it's super important because when we get stressed um, it's very, very often that we will get to the point of pressure and we feel like we're going to crack and often we'll step off that, that um, platform and we will convert back to old ways and old patterns rather than yes. force and push yeah. through. And yeah. so I love this cute little video. It's only a minute 30, so I'm just going to play it. Let me know if you can hear it effectively and then we'll discuss it. Yep. How's that? I don't think I can. No. Hmm. Now? No. No, I can't hear him. Oh, bugger. Um, why is that not working? All right now. No, I still can't hear him. Oh bugger. Oh well, I'll have to grab that one and um hmm. put it up That's into interesting. Put it into, into, into the into the group, yeah. Um Basically, what it talks about is he's sitting in a waiting room and he's reading this article and Jess is on. Oh, hi, Jess. And, um, and what he's talking about is how the lobster only ever grows under, like, how, how, how does the lobster grow? How do we grow, really? How does the lobster grow? It's inside of a hard, rigid shell. And mm -hmm. rigid shell is this soft, gooey internal organ, this internal being. And it seems really quite miraculous that this thing actually does grow. It actually grows significantly fast, but inside of a hard shell. And so in order to, I'm going to summarize it, but in order to get out and actually grow, what happens is inside of it, it's, it's growing, it's developing, it's growing, it's developing. And it gets so to a point where it becomes in so much pain, so, so much excruciating pain that the lobster will actually climb underneath the rock and wedge yourself up underneath it and push up and allow the pressure of the water and its internal pressure. So it's a pressure from the top, pressure from the bottom, pressure from every direction. And it will push itself to the absolute limit to the point where it actually cracks its own shell. What? And births itself into this soft, gooey, vulnerable state to then grow a new shell. And it's only a minute 30 long, so I'm going to put it in the group. But it's a really fucking awesome analogy for us as humans. It is so often that we get to this point where we feel like all of the stress and everything that's going on around us is going to be the end of us. And it's remembering that in order to grow from where we are right now and to expand into all the parts of us, we have to sit there in those moments and know that it is enough. It is you, it is your thing, it is there for you to have enough pressure to force yourself under that rock and to push so fucking hard that you can't help but crack your own shell. <laughs> wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's all that smack. <laughs> um, and it is, it really, really is. But you internally will know when you need to be in stress pressure pressure and crack but you will also know when you need to be soft and nurture and so it's ironic that this is this week's program and this week's conversation because there's so much going on that's so relevant to this conversation right now um but what i was saying about this morning about how i woke up this morning i literally woke up this morning and went i'm depressed i'm not a depressed person yeah but I, I woke up and went i'm really depressed so i knew that it was a state that was alerting me to a fair few things 
And in the past, this is where you've got to know that your, your, your limits and understand. So with a diplomat, I now looked around and I went, what have I done that's taken me out of my flow and not given me my plan, not given me the time frames to feel like I have space to be free is one. Two, it was in the past, I would push and numb. So I would eat food, I would drink alcohol, I would just get busy and I would be aggressive about it and trying to find things to fix it rather than allowing it to happen. So with the, the lobster, it doesn't fight the fact that it's growing inside of its shell. It just knows it's coming. It understands that this is part of the process. So for me, it wasn't about fighting some way of getting, of not cracking my shell. I was like, cool, this is happening. I'm in this. I'm not going to numb it. I'm not going to step away from it. I'm actually going to sit in this feeling. And what did I do? I called it in this morning. I was like, what's causing the depression? Where is it sitting in me? What am I feeling? How do I want to express? Do I want to get in my car and scream? Do I want to take my shoes off and walk? Do I want to laugh? Do I want to cry? Do I need to breathe? And ironically, I haven't been able to breathe for three days properly because my spine has been sitting in a really shit spot and um, my diaphragm has been sitting terribly. So I've been adjusted tonight. And um, even my chiropractor was like, holy fuck balls. I don't know how you were coping with that. And then the sequence of the universe does these things and certain people have messaged me and certain events have happened and certain things have happened. And, and you get to sit there and go, wow, I sat in the feeling and allowed it and allowed everything to happen how it needed to be rather than fighting it. And now the pieces are starting to fall into place and I haven't allowed myself to step into the mega stress that I used to. So I know I'm going to be okay. So it's about looking at the patterns. Um, where am I here? It's about looking at the patterns that have been happening for you in the past. And do you notice I say for you in the past and look at what's been happening for you that continuously happens. And have you allowed yourself to push to the point of crawling under the rock and cracking your own shell? Or have you ran away to float downstream? Have you, have you shrunk internally and shied away from the hard things? Have you shrunk internally and denied yourself the nutrition and the nourishment and the embodiment of everything that's going on for you? And that's where it comes to the peaks and the barriers and the plateaus. So some of you girls have put in your peaks and plateaus this week, which I'm so fucking grateful for. Um, and it really is about understanding that none of that is a loss. Jess will know the answer to this. So I'm going to leave it for Kat to maybe answer this one. I can see you're unmuted, but jump in if you can, whoever. Many people see plateau as a bad thing. They're like, oh, I've hit a plateau and it's not so good. So when you're looking at a peak versus a plateau, do either of you know the difference between a peak and a plateau? Jess, just your mission. I'm no, here. Just... I'm here. Sorry, I just I've just come upstairs. I've just come into the house. So, awesome. Um, peak and plateaus. Okay, peaks when you get to a stage that you've got. Um. Okay, sorry. Take your time. I know a lot about peaks and plateaus because I always feel like I'm, I, I, as, a, as a Capricorn, I need to have, you know, be able to climb these mountains. And then, then I get to the stage where I'm like, oh, okay, so what's next? What's mm. next? And I, I, I know when I was younger that I used to feel the need to actually have something to keep going for and then... Then when I got to the top of it, it was like, okay, so what's, what's going to happen and what's happening next? And, yeah, plateauing is not a good, good place for me. Mm, interesting. At all. What would you say a plateau is? For me, that's, that sort of is like a... Um, it's where you get to a stage and you're just... Like it's it's not good. It's not a good spot. You, you're starting to fail because if you're in a plateau, that means that you're static. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And not progressing. Interesting, interesting. Okay, can we unpack this a little bit more? Let's unpack this. <laughs> Please. Okay, so with a peak, we're often striving for a peak. But a peak actually has the problem because it gets to a point. And what's on the other side of the peak? Uh, yeah, okay. Yes. Is a plummet. Yes. The so slope, what comes the slippery slope? Yeah. What comes up must come down. And often as we're striving, we're so hell bent, we're like guns blazing, we're taking it to the moon. And we often don't stop to evaluate what was there that got us here. And often we'll just topple straight off and we'll fall down a slope and we'll fall backwards. So I would say you've been hitting peaks in the past. The plateau is like this and it has a flat point. Mm. The biggest benefit of a plateau is that generally you're at a plateau is you've, you've climbed, you've, you've, you've done the hard work, you've hit this flat point. It's a vantage point. It's a moment to take a breath. Yeah. So the peak was like, ah, fuck, I'm gone. Yeah. Whereas a plateau, we actually forget to celebrate the crap out of the plateau, right? Mm. Because you are at a point you have never been before. Yeah. Because generally a peak, you've been too many times before. You've flogged yourself. Mm. You've been doing all this shit. And then you hit this point and you fall off of it again. Yeah. And you fall down. Whereas a plateau, you get to and you go, hmm okay, I've got time to sit here and reflect, which is why I have the small wins post, which is why I have you guys reflecting on what you're winning at. Because ultimately, I could sit here and celebrate your, your wins with you and be like, yay, clap, clap, thumbs up, cool. But what I'm doing is I'm going, what contributed to that? What happened? Why was this one different? How did you succeed? What did you put in to get that result? Because we can put our blinkers on and we can just keep chasing the peak and topple off, peak and topple off. Or we can get to a point and go, I'm putting my stake in right here and I'm going to look behind me and I'm quickly going to see what, what was my stepping stones? What were the things that were different this time? Now from this brand new vantage point, I can summon my energy again to check in and go, where are the two degree shifts? Where are the little things that I can tighten up? And what have I forgotten? Let's go back to my six week program. What was week one? All right. So I'm a guardian. Uh, Refresh my own memory so I don't forget. So what? I'm a guardian. So how's my social aspect going? I'm a diplomat. How's my environment going? What's going on around me? Am I getting enough fresh air? Is my space cluttered uh, decluttered enough? Do I have, I'm probably looking at my stuff. Um, (laughs) I threw out a heap of gas stuff, some magic water stuff the other day. I had a big stockpile of stuff that was sitting there and I went, that energetically feels crap. I'm throwing it out. Ah, uh, this feels like just going through and realizing. Look around your house. It's the same as that that thing that's hit everyone with um decluttering. It's go around your house. What feels good, keep it. Anything that feels bad, get rid of it. Yeah. You'll find new. You'll make new. You'll donate it to someone else if you wanted to go to somewhere good. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But look behind you and think, okay, I'm at a plateau, which means I've never been at this point before. Now I'm going to figure out what is my two degree shifts. So when I first did the six week program, I did my environment or I did my, my social and I did X, Y, Z. What could, what did I miss? What could I have done better? All right. I'm going to go make that little shift. I'm going to go back and tweak that thing. Let's see how that feels. Now I know my six step process. Now I can go back and self evaluate every time I get to that point. How is my food for guardians on priority number two? How is my genius for my diplomats? Am I on point? Am I on mission? Am I seeing the blessing in what I'm doing as a diplomat? Do I feel like I'm having a purpose and a point and a course? I was at an event uh, Tuesday, yesterday and 
uh, the lady doesn't know that she's a diplomat, but she's talking and she's running this event and she's going, so the beginning of it, she goes, so we're going to do this, 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 and then about halfway through, I'm going to tell you guys the sales pitch just so you've got time to think about it, but I'm just letting you know now that it's coming and I want you to know that you've got 48 hours to choose. You don't need to rush. And I went, oh, you're such a diplomat. Look at you giving them all time to choose. Look at you giving them the understanding of what's coming. So with the genius for the diplomats, it's more about going, am I in a job? And maybe, maybe they're getting stressed out at the fact that people keep lumbering everything on them all at once with too much detail and not enough of a, a plan. So do I need to have a conversation with my boss, my business partner, my children, my family and go, what is the end result? And what are the steps through it? Help me see the steps through it so I know what we're talking about before, Cat. Where can I self-evaluate? Where can I get my dopamine hit? Where can I get my little wins along this way? Because, yes, we can march. Yes, we can push through the stress as guardians and diplomats. And we can prolong our, our, our stress response for far greater than any other health type. You are capable. But you need the little wins and you need to get the pats on the back wherever you can to assist you. So this is why guardians will resent their, their loved ones and their family members when they're, they're giving too much and suddenly they feel like they're not, um, they're being taken advantage of. It's because no one's giving you a pat on the back for the little things. But it's your responsibility to A, have the conversation with them to remind them that and be like, hey, you're not being a little kid. You're going, Hey, can I, it really would help me if I could get to a little bit of gratification here. Occasionally mm. you're an adult, you're allowed to do that. The second thing is, is also remembering you need to give that to yourself. Yeah. What are you doing that creates a clear plan so that you know when you're achieving so you can be like, fuck everyone else. I know I got there. Mm. I know I've done this. I got me. It's just nice to hear it from you occasionally. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So we have exhaustive energy within us where we are capable of going the long haul, but we do have to make sure that we create the space and the little, the little checkpoints like on Mario Kart where you get the banana when you go past this point, you got this when you go past that point, you know, you're going around and you'll find these little things that are rewards because you need it. Mm. Your dopamine and serotonin levels are precious commodities. So protect it. Um, I went off on a big tangent then. <laughs> but the barriers. I love it, but I love it. It's so <laughs> funny. This week has just, that has just been my week. How this so? This particular, well, I had this rip roaring argument with, with my ex, and it was, you know, just how we were talking about the parenting styles and everything, and how. Um, he said to me, cause he's really, he doesn't, he likes everything short and sweet. Doesn't need to know the details. He just wants a yes or no answer. It's black or it's white. It's nothing in between. And, um, anyway, so we were, we were actually sort of talking about how, um, I'm trying to think how we actually got onto the subject, but it was like, he said, what do you expect me to say? You've done a good job with, with parenting our daughter. And I'm going, well, a little bit would help, you know, just at least something. And and that's just been, you know, how I feel with, with and you now just saying that that's my, that's the guardian. It's like, oh, flipping heck. So I'm expecting it, not getting it from him. That's for sure. But it's something that's within my DNA. OMG. That's mm. really cool. Cool to know. And being able to communicate that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, and learning the parts of you. In your profile, in your mind section, in your social section and in your talent section, you will actually start to be able to see the pieces of the puzzle and understand that you will have a part of you that is driven and that will show you um, how you're driven. Are you driven blinkers on or are you driven by the community and all the people involved in getting in and having fun? Are you driven by checklists? Are you driven by graphs? Are you driven by someone shouting at you? What is it that drives you? And then knowing that part of you, like, so Bradley knows that there are parts of me that he'll go, you're working tonight? And I'm like, yeah, I'm working tonight. And he'll, he'll go sit and watch TV and I'll be on my computer. 
and he's okay with that because I communicate it with him. So those around you, the ones you love so near and dear, you need to make sure that you give them every opportunity to meet your expectation. Yeah. Because it's very, very easy for us to have the expectation on ourselves mm. and them. And then when they don't meet it, it's generally because you're not meeting it. And then it ends up in this big shit fit. And you're, you're realizing that you are, is that you are, you're expecting others to do the thing that you're not, or, or you're feeling like you're not getting it yourself and you desperately just want something to work out. So why can't it be the person outside of ourselves that gets it right? So we feel a little bit more able and, and willing to do it ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Which brings me to my next point, which is somewhere here. So the lo have either of you heard of the locus of control? No. The locus of control is a theory that we are all in business, in staying in our own business is all within the locus of control. And it's a three business theory. It's very relevant. <laughs> Quite often we feel our life is out of our control and we will get stressed in different ways by that. So guardians, it's we feel like our life is out of control because everyone and it, everything's happening to everyone and everyone's doing everything to us. Diplomats, everything's not happening in my time and no one's allowing me to have my time and everyone's too demanding and hasn't given me a clear enough picture. For a connector, it will be you're too boring, you're too, like, you're squashing my fun. I can't have enough fun, so, you know, I can't be me and it stresses me. Then with the activators, it's uh, people telling them what to do. They naturally say no. You can say to an activator, let's go do, 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 and they'll go, no. And they're like, what do you mean, no? And they'll go, oh, I just want to say no, so I can, I can just say no. So you'll find you'll have children and family members and, and co-workers that just shit you because they just say no, and they really do mean yes, but they just want to test your integrity. They really just want to test whether or not you are going to follow through with it, whether you are, within, are fully involved and fully in this or not. And then you've got the sensors and the, and the crusaders. These guys just, they need to see everything in logical plan. They don't want too much detail. And so I'm assuming that your ex-partner may be actually someone who is a crusader, I'm assuming potentially. Sounds about right. Mm. <laughs> and so for him, he's like, what do you mean you need this emotional validation thing? Because I don't need it. And it doesn't make sense to need emotional validation because that's a waste of energy and expectations where we could just be going and doing the stuff and doing the things. And so those relationships quite often will break down due to the guardian expecting and needing things, but not able to communicate effectively. But the crusader going, I don't understand why this, about? yeah, I don't understand why this is important. Mm -hmm. And so then you get yeah. to have the conversations of like, well, it is important because I feel things. You think things, I feel things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so often when we are in business, the three different types of business is uh, universe's business. So can you think of what might come up as universe's business? Any, any thoughts about what that might be? The universe is business? No, the universe is business. Oh, the the universe. Around it. universe, God's business, um, you know, whatever you, whatever you believe is the hierarchy. Okay. So getting worried about other people, other things, business. The universe is business. How many hmm. people do you know who have ever said, I would do that or I could do that but it might rain. I should do that. I was going to do that, but the weather. Uh -huh. yep. I should do that, could do that, would have done that, but the cat. Yep. 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 This is the universe's business. And often what can happen is we get stuck outside of ourselves and we're in the universe's business. We're trying to be in its business. And ultimately the biggest 
the way that we lose ourselves, our integrity, our drive and where we're going is when we step outside of our own business, right? So it's really being aware of, of whose business are you actually in? Okay. So the universe's business is the weather, the stuff that you have no control no over. Control. Yeah. And yet somehow it's relevant to dictating your success, dictating your validation, dictating your value, your, your worth, mm. your ability. Then we have other people's business. Mm -hmm. So guardians and diplomats are terrible. Guardians particularly are terrible for everybody else's business. So it's, you know, I, I can't do it, but my, because my daughter is this, my son is that, and my cousin is that, and my auntie is that, and the neighbor, well, she needs that too. And oh my God, well, I couldn't possibly, mm. I couldn't possibly do this right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And it's very, very easy slope to be in that one. It's super easy to be in, in the universe's business, business. It's super easy to be in other people's business. Yeah. And the hardest one is to be in your business. Mm. It's your responsibility. Your partner doesn't actually get, and this is something that's had to be a lesson for me for the last couple of years. My partner's business is none of my business. Mm. My children's business, stepchildren's business, is none of my business. The only business I have any, any energy or capacity to be inside of is all of my business. Mm -hmm. How I show up, how I react. Yep. so it's very very interesting when you have a look i'd love for you guys to have a look in your profiles and just over the next couple of days have a look if you get a chance and it'd be great conversation to have is to what parts of your mind aspect and or social aspect give you the telltale signs of how you quite commonly may step into other people's business there will be little warnings in there that give you just how you might slip out of your own business. Okay. Things to be aware of. Yep. But really just look at your own language, look at what you're thinking internally and externally, what you're saying to people and just check in with yourself. And I've done it, I did it just the other day and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in Brad's business. Oh, that's not mine. <laughs> and then I wanted to go for, I wanted to do something go for a walk and it was night time and i was like oh i would but it's night time no you actually mentally need to go for a walk mm. and it's none of your business what the weather's doing what time of the day it is you need to walk go do it mentally physically just go do it mm. Mm. so it's really about getting through those barriers it's another aspect of barriers that will commonly come up for people so while we have diplomat and guardian on the line and we are sitting, let's quickly jump into your priorities for this week, guys. And I would love to know place and food. So in your place aspect, Kat, do you want to have a look? Jess, do you want to have a look in food? And just let me know, is there, actually, Kat, you'll need to read. Jess, your food's pretty much of a discussion more so. So, Kat, if you want to jump into your app on your phone and have a look in place for me and find a few statements that you think are quite on, maybe something that you either agree with or don't agree with, one or the other. Yep. Do that. And, Jess, for you with food, it's more about how you're going with your times. And I'd love for you to share how you feel how you felt in the past even when you've shifted to the time frame, or maybe when you first shifted to the time frame, if you'd care to share that, that kind of an understanding and unraveling. You're muted. Hang on. Oh, now? Now you got to. Yep. <laughs> um, currently food. Like, Personally, you know, sort of, I gave you a bit of a rundown last night, what's going on. Mm -hmm. I am trying my best with my food and my time slots. Really hard at the moment because I'm allowing stuff to affect me more than what it should. And I think a lot of this too has to do with pregnancy hormones I have found are not the coolest thing at the moment because everything is just so 
fucking amplified. Like that's just how it is just so intense. So the small problem or the problems that we've got are just created so much worse because my emotional state is just shattered at the moment. Mm -hmm. But previously, like I've done what one six week program once before. And then I jumped on board right at the start when you first sort of started doing all this stuff, like back, what's that? 2017. Yeah. 2017. I'm like, Oh yeah, I went into it. I followed it probably not as much as what I should have. And I'm like, yep, it, it's working. That last six week program, it allowed me to actually focus on my foods and my times. Like I've stopped, I stopped drinking coffee early in the morning cause I was awake at five. So my first thing I'd done was have a cup of coffee. I started eating later. I started eating like less than what I was, but the stuff for me. And I noticed that like, shit, what was it? Six weeks, I lost 14 and a half kilos mm. that mm. last time. So it proved to me that eating at the right times, I felt more energized. I didn't feel as bloated. I didn't feel as yucky. I was actually feeling better in myself and I'm noticing that now because my mind has been caught up on so so friggin much at the moment and I'm letting my emotions take control mm -hmm. I'm not like whilst I'm trying my best to eat when I should be eating and eating what I should be eating I'm not following it like I should be mm -hmm. and I'm noticing that and my whole the last, I would say the last three weeks has been the worst, the last three to four weeks. And it's just gradually gotten worse. Mm -hmm. And personally for me, like I am to a point now that I know that I've got to get sleep. I can't sleep. One, whatever this little lovely thing inside me is doing, <laughs> it, it's doing it over night time. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm awake a lot more of a night time. And this is before all our stress stuff come on. But now I'm sort of wearing myself down too. So mm -hmm. I'm getting three or four hours sleep. I'm not eating right. I'm starting to worry about everything more. Mm -hmm. See where it's coming from. And it's just a matter of me trying to change it. Mm -hmm. um, being in the headspace I am right now, I've never been as low as what I am. Mm. So this is where it's hard for me because I haven't had to get myself out of a position like this. Like I'm to that point, like I wake up, oh, I, most nights, not most nights, some nights, I'm to the point where there are days where I'm like, I really hope I don't wake up in the morning. And I shouldn't think like that, but that's how far I've gone and it just everything just gets amplified so much more and it couldn't have happened at a worse time <laughs> as what it is now and you know like with Russell working away too like whilst he supports me and I've got him there for him like for me he's not here I'm not I'm not getting that comfort and that support that I need like right next to me yeah I've got my mum my mum has been a godsend but yes you know as well as I do what my mum's like too. So <laughs> we butt heads a lot. So it's really great when that happens and it just makes everything so much worse than what it is. Mm -hmm. like, and then what, like, what my mind is thinking it is. So I sort of had a few little positive things today, which is a good, a good thing. Yeah. Um, today and probably yesterday, I sort of came to that realization that I can't change what's going to happen. It is going to happen. I've come to the fact where now, quite frankly, when it comes to our business, I don't, I really don't give a shit anymore. I know that it's going to be gone at the end of the month and mm. then start focusing on me and focusing on us. It's just everything that comes with that as well. So these are very massive steps for even for Russell, so for Russell, for us to be going down this path, this is something where he's never been either. This is all that uncharted ground. Mm -hmm. so, so where are the familiarity? So everything I'm hearing there is that everything's very much unknown. So my curiosity would be is 
where are the places? So Russell's away, mum is there. Do you have a shirt that he smells, that you can smell him? And this goes back to what you're going to be doing with your child. So this is the, the small core fundamentals of finding the creature comforts. Because for you right now, that is essential. Is it sleeping with a hot water bag and his T-shirt wrapped around his pillow? Is it... Um, I mean, you guys are having conversations, which is great, but we need some creature comforts in there that keep you safe and nurtured. I know they seem small, but those... I, did, I did change pillows over, so I'm actually sleeping on his pillow. So his pillow is And as for like the, the creature comfort and that sleeping next to me, I have like this. <laughs> Yeah, true. Your gigantic dog is as big as a human anyway. And it even snores. So, like, I've <laughs> I've got that there. Um, and it's just sort of trying to find – it's really hard to – one thing I have sort of sat down and thought about a lot today, when you are as down and as low as this, trying to find that balance, like, it is just such a – such a hard thing and I'm slowly finding things and like I'll sort of I'll talk with you sort of away from this so that not everyone needs to know my issues but like talking with someone here that I've actually connected with like this lady that I know we are so much alike it's uncanny mm -hmm. and it was that easy friendship just walk in and she has been a godsend. And just talking with her today about future prospects for us, I'm actually laughing. Today I was laughing and I haven't laughed in over a month, you know, because I feel better. And I know that even though it's really shit and really bad right now, there is something at the end of the tunnel that could be a positive thing for us. And it's not just me, like it's for Russell, it's for our family. Mm -hmm. That made me feel better, you know. And Where did you feel it? Where did you feel better? Um, probably would have been after I finished talking to her this morning. So it would have been about mid-morning. Where in your of, body did you feel it? Inside, like just deep inside, like inside, just having that gut-wrenching feeling lift a little bit. So that's... Pretty much the last two weeks has been like that nauseous, knotted feeling. And it's just that constant, like, this is sort of what has put me off eating as well. And I know that that is the worst thing ever, but you'd eat. And me, normally, I can't eat a big meal anyway. But when I was eating, I was eating half of what I should have been eating anyway. So I was getting to that point where internally I was worked myself up so, so much that it was affecting everything. Like, not sleeping, not eating properly, not, not focusing. So even when I had to focus, mm -hmm. I wasn't focusing because everything else has been dictated by my situation. Mm -hmm. And so just, where, yeah. so there's, there's the story. There's, there's a situation that's happening for you and that you are in. And I bet that rolls out all day, every day. Am I right? Yeah. Where can you break the cycle? Where are the small things? I asked you to focus on where you felt that happiness this morning. Yeah. It's all relevant because you are, you're the only person that knows you as well as you do. You are yeah. the master of you. What I would love to tap into is when you felt that feeling, where did you feel it? Can you find it again and again? Yeah. Because at this point in time, everything else will be noisier if you let it. Yeah. Are you stopping to take a deep breath? When was the last time you breathed deeply? Um, probably not for a good, I would say, week. Like I was sort of, like I was getting into that point and I think just purely our situation, like I'm getting closer and closer to that point where we had a big life change to do what we're doing mm -hmm. and that has 
been ruined for us, like due to our situation. And it's just that feeling, that big feeling of failure. So that's my biggest thing. I feel like I have failed, Mm -hmm. even though I keep getting told it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Inside me, I'm very, very headstrong. So in my mind, yep, I've got that plan. I'm going to make it work. And this is how it's going to work and why it's going to work. Mm -hmm. But to have this and just not taking that step away to actually focus on me and worry more about our situation and, you know, and then it comes down to your relationship. You're sort of like going, well, maybe I fucked this up because I wasn't doing my job good enough. When re- in reality, sitting down and going through everything I've been through, especially the last, probably since Friday, I had to go through a whole heap of shit just to get things ready and actually physically going through things. I found out things where pretty much we were stitched up in our situation where we were. So we were set up from the start to fail. Mm. That sort of made me feel a bit better going, hey, how am I meant to get anywhere ahead if we were pretty much set up to fail from the start? Mm -hmm. Today's conversation with this friend of mine up here it was that deep, like I could get down deep inside to where I wanted to go. And this is what I wanted to do with what we've got here, you know, grow that. So that's our life. And me and this other lady, we are very, very similar minded when we're thinking about this stuff and actually to be able to, um, Oh, I'm back. Sorry. My <laughs> battery's going, Oh, the battery's low. Um, but, <laughs> to actually be able to get back to me and personally get back to how I feel about things. I think that was the big, the big thing that made me feel better. Like Mm. I took a breath. So what can we do? What are some things that you know we can do to bring you back to that more frequently? I have got just going by a conversation today with this lady this afternoon, like I have just been that that time where you focus on things. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, the stuff that I've discovered about where we want to go. And then I spoke with Russell about it tonight. And even in him, like he sounds happier like than what what he was a week ago because this gives us purpose and this gives us drive and that passion. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm looking forward to now. I've come to the realization that it's in it's inevitable what's going to happen i am not going to stop what's going to happen Mm -hmm. it's just going to happen so i'm curious and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna pause you because i'm really curious because i do know you um is that i know you're great at speaking your feelings when was the last time you wrote your feelings and your thoughts Not for a long time. Can I challenge you to do that? I feel like right now, yeah, you need to see clearly what you're thinking and feeling because you've had a lot. You've had so much, and you can speak your story and keep speaking what's going on. But we need to find daily where your small wins are. Yeah. your stepping stones are because even though you've got people to speak to you're still borrowing energy from them and yeah. you're not finding it within you yeah. you've got every or you've got all your answers you've got all the power you've got all the energy that you need to be able to get the clarity to be able to get the shifts forward everything you need you have and it's very easy to keep doing what we've always done and go to others to get that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I feel there is a gold mine of clarity within you. And the power you're searching for, I feel like you already have it. You've got a you've got a huge power source inside of you of another human, but I know that you are you're like me and you can go outside of you to get clarity very, very easily. And it feels good. But you're still, and this is something that I have learnt myself just very recently. The clarity ultimately comes when you go to yourself. Yeah. Okay. And so, and also 
stop telling your story and write it because yeah. in writing it, you see what you're saying. When you hear it, it's like a lullaby. When you write it, you're like, oh, crap. Did I really just write that? Did yeah. I really just speak that? And it, it just gives you that ultimate mirror, mirror perspective. This is the thing that is the, the is your power source. It is your barrier. It is your peak. It is your plateau all in one. Yeah. And I'd be curious to see what comes up for you. Yeah. No worries. I'll give it my best shot. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's just there's certain words and, and certain um, certain things I heard on repeat there. And I'm, I'm just curious to see what that's actually bringing you into each time. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> And then I'd like to see what are your little wins you can do with food. So bringing it back, Mama Bear is not going to be very hungry. We get that. But what are the little wins that we can do? Where are the nurture points that you can set up? Does mum need to come in and cook something? Does, uh, do you need to have things prepped in the cupboard? Do we need to make little zucchini slices or something like that that are little nibbly things? Like what can we do to feed you and nourish you at the right times? Yeah. Yeah, no, I can sit down and work it out. <laughs> good, good. Spend some time. You've got the time. Don't jump on your phone. Don't jump on your on your TV. Spend some time on you. Yeah. Set some nice music. Get your phone and set up some nice, like, music. Um, actually, being that you're all endomorphs, the best thing to get you productive is play brown music, brown noise. Yeah. I've sh- have, I, have I shared you with that before? I think so, yeah. I'm not getting sure. I go, oh, computer, seriously? That one, yes. Thank you. Okay. It is a little something, something like this. But it should be right at the top of mine. There we go. Ah. Shh, not you. Um, yes. So it's got this cool brown screen. And in that one, it will just play this brown noise. And if you want to be doing anything, productive anything channeling into yourself not russell bronson he just keeps popping up as a stupid ad but if you want to be doing anything pop that on with headphones or noise in the background and you will just find yourself that everything in the world stops everything stops and you have clarity yeah it's like a superpower frequency for endomorphs yeah give it a go lock the world out yeah (laughs) will do (laughs) and find the small things in the food food is the priority this week uh, sorry no um food is the guardian this week no 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 food is yours place is the guardian and so yes yes spend a bit of time doing some prep yeah will do no to yourself <laughs> no. and in and yeah. you know what if if you are in the emotional state where you know you're needing sweet things or you're craving sweet or savory make something make something yourself whether it's a chocolate mousse or whether it's a um a cake or a biscuit or a um potato rosties whatever it is find something that you are going to get pleasure because right now emotionally and environmentally you are in stress and what does a diplomat seek in their food yeah pleasure yeah pleasure so if you are not getting pleasure from other areas use your mouth i i i I did that the other night so pregnancy like i said pregnancy is really great my big thing at the moment is bacon 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 (laughs) bacon i can talk about bacon and then i will think about bacon for eight hours until i find bacon like that's how bad it is the other night whilst it's not my best meal i've ever had i ate bacon for dinner and i felt so so satisfied afterwards because all i want is bacon um Mm. being pregnant will push your buttons so much more oh it is it is unreal just stupid things like food wise like i can 
eat when I'm meant to be eating. And like I said, I really, really think this lovely little thing is doing things in the night time because come 9, 30, 10 o'clock, even though I've eaten in the right times and I'm filled, 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, it's just like this instant like, yep, I want something to eat. And I'm like, yep, right here. <laughs> like, it, 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 I'm trying my best not to because I know that if I continue doing that, it's only going to be worse for me later on. Mm. And I'm not settling. But because I'm wondering if you're not sleeping well, are you eating anything like chocolatey and too heavy? Because the thing with a diplomat is if you are eating too heavy, too late, you will not sleep well. And if you've got a baby inside of you too. (laughs) Everything is sort of, everything's light stuff. So it's nothing, nothing real heavy. It's not carby. It's not sweet. It's just, you know. What are you craving? What am I? anything at the moment it's just anything like bacon i'm more (laughs) savory than i think so the sweets i can i think i sat here russell was home we had a block of chocolate in the fridge for a week and i didn't even look at it just Mm -hmm. sweets aren't my thing it's all savory stuff at the moment so you know like with the good thing is with leftovers like if it's veggies and meat leftovers, I'm picking at the veggies, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to find the better options, Mm. but it's one of those things where it just, it Mm. kicks in, like it'll start kicking in around that quarter past nine. And I'm like, no, no. How big are your lunches? They're the, they're the biggest meal I'm having. So my lunch is the biggest meal I'm having. And then my dinners are a little bit smaller because I'm finding I'm not really hungry. So Mm. My patterns have been thrown so out of loop, and I've sort of noticed it in the last five weeks. So, are you um, okay? So, are your lunches? So, while we got Bubby, are your lunches protein? I do have some protein in them, so yeah. Okay. Um, and are you eating carbs in at lunch? No. So when are you having carbs? Um, I'm usually having carbs in the morning. So I've been sticking with like when I'm eating breakfast, it's usually like oats or something like that. Okay. So um, can we shift that? Can we take your carbs out of lunch, out of breakfast? Um, that insulin spike, that's what I was waiting for. I knew there's something there that's doing it. So that insulin spike first thing in the morning, can we shift that? And um, even you, you're having leftovers at night time. Can we take those leftovers either into breakfast or can we create smoothies at breakfast? Yeah. To yeah. be easily digested and not too much fruit, like lots and lots of green, like find a way to throw everything, capsicum, um, zucchini, cucumber, kale, spinach, lemon juice, and then some pineapple or some some berries or whatever you've got in the freezer that you'd be using or oranges, whatever's top of your list. And don't have a cold. You're going to be hyper reactive at the moment. Yeah. And I'm just thinking the oats will be too much of an insulin shot in the morning. And as much as fruit would be, if you're smashing it with that much green and magnesium right now, you are think of like whatever you've eaten green in your life. I want you to 10 X it because with Bobby in your body, your magnesium is going to be at its lowest. Yeah. So yeah. we need, that's why I was, I was listening to you, but I was trying to find the pattern of what's out of sync. Yeah. No, that's all right. If I can work it that way. Cause like that's so what happened uh, when was it even if you have even if you have okay you like oats yeah okay what if you have two lunches yeah one at two one at four yeah okay and maybe yeah. have your two o'clock be your oats and whatever you would do for breakfast and four o'clock will be your protein and something else yeah okay yeah and then your dinner would be at eight o'clock and just veggies yeah yeah. Let's see how that does. That does that feel doable? Yeah, it would probably be a lot doable than sort of what I'm doing now. So cool. like, it would be enough to do that. Because <clears throat> so does that make sense to you, Kat? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Definitely move it from, like, like you were saying, the, the, the glycemic spike in the morning, move it so that it's later in the day and then she feels like she's she doesn't, you know, she's not going to be craving things. And I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful. Lovely. Has she gone? Oh, no. So with everything, so because I've had gastric sleeving on, so I have a midwife that comes to visit me. So she's my personal midwife the whole way through all this sort of shit and she's like well because you've had the gastric sleeving because she's asking me about my meals and I've told her about this and she's like oh well well because you've had the gastric sleeving done we'll send you to a dietitian I went here we go we'll go back to another dietitian I went through this with my gastric sleeving and I know that it's just it is phenomenal the sheet of paper I will take a photo and send it through to you Please the, do. The servings of stuff that I am meant to have going through pregnancy. So my weight now is just sitting above the average line of weight gain for me now. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, I haven't put on weight in three weeks either. So I've had a balance. Mm -hmm. But it's like... Oh, was it six or five or six serves of veggies easy enough for me because that's what I can do two serves of fruit um three and a half serves of protein I think eight now you what? wait for this eight serves of carbs or eight serves of grains and I'm like now they give you the recommendation of what a serve is so eight serves is equivalent to like a slice of toast so like eight slices of bread i'm like i if i was to have toast i have one slice of toast and that fills me like you would not believe how am i meant to get this in and so she said oh how have you been feeling and i'm like well i have been feeling like shit like i'm run down so i don't have energy and i'm not sleeping so i know that i'm run down mm -hmm. and she goes oh you need to really focus on getting your grains up. What? I will take a photo of this sheet. You will be mortified when you see it, Shana, because I know what you're like when it comes to this stuff. Even for me, it was such a massive look. Like, just knowing the serving size that I can have normally yeah. on a normal basis, I would be eating from five o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night to get every serve on that piece of paper that's ideally meant for me. And they understand that you've got a gastric sleeve. Yeah. Oh my God. So if you have a look here in your profile, your grains are wild rice, rice bran. You can get rice bran. Um, yeah. You've got a little bit of grains there, minimal. And they are two to three serves per week. Yeah. And see, that's the thing, like going by my profile, like when you do look at it, like it is very minimal and like. Oh. Avocado mousse would be dynamite for you right now. So I've sort of looked, say like, avocado is a big thing. I like avocado at the moment. So that's another one of those things. I found teaming avocado and bacon together really good. I know that's probably not the greatest. Jessica. Thing, but Jessica. It's that crazy. Ah. Dana. it's that you talk to that little sprocket thing that's growing in my guts you know when it goes hey avocado and bacon sound good together wow that tastes really good <laughs> every every two rashes of bacon every one rash of bacon you're you have to have a cup of spinach yeah <laughs> i'll cut back on the bacon i haven't yeah. had too it's not like I can really fit too much bacon. It's just like that. <laughs> Every step. But kale is top for you at the moment. So reading yours right now, I can go, right, kale in a smoothie. If you were to do some kind of a curry, because you've got a lot of spices here, you've got bubby growing inside of you and you've got a lot of Chinese herbal medicine going in here right now. So yeah. you've got a lot of cabbage, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of cabbage, a lot of 
broccoli was there, leeks is there, um, a lot of avocado, artichoke hearts. Get have you got an Aldi up there? No. Oh bloody. There, I don't think they're any further north than Bundy at the moment. Yeah. So it's a long trip to get some uh, artichoke hearts. Um, so spinach. So having a look here, look at how much of this you can get into the one dish each day. Yeah. Lentils are huge. For you. Lamb's I huge. For you. I know this time was a lot different because I know previously everything was like. Um, because I was trying to tone and lose weight, mm-hmm. where this time I put it down as maintaining just purely because I am pregnant. Yeah. Like I noticed like that big shift and change in my food. So like the protein serves, like my meat serves have gone up a lot more to what they were. So mm-hmm. chicken was one, I think I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Chicken on my list. It's like in the green section. I'm pretty sure it was. Chicken thing. So, but you know, like there was that more, like more of a chance to have like that protein, which is probably probably good because it will fill me up, and I know it will fill me up. You got egg whites at the top of your protein list. Everything egg white out of everything else. So an egg white omelet even for breakfast, or an egg yeah. white zucchini frittata um, slice that you could have as a quick small snack. Um, yeah. Chicken is on the go. So yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So how do we feel with some action plans around food? Better than what I have been. Awesome. A little bit more inspired. Yeah. I'm still craving bacon though, but anyway. It's Make it a celebration. <laughs> I want you to not go without it. Okay. So if you were to have bacon to satisfy your cravings, how many times per week do you think you would need it? Oh, at the moment, it's only like once a week. Like, but when I have it, I have like those thin rashes. So I'm eating like five or six of them. So <laughs> it's probably just beyond the average serve that I should be having. <laughs> but it's not like I'm having it every day or every second day. It's like once a week or once every 10 days or something. It's just. So you. I get a fix fresh? Or are you buying it fresh? Or you got it frozen? Um, usually I, I don't buy it fresh from the deli. Just. I buy it, the packaged stuff, so it's packaged. Can you freeze it? Yeah, I freeze everything. <clears throat> so I challenge you to freeze into smaller portions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then you only pull out that one. You yeah. still have <laughs> you know I, Dude, do you know how hard that is as a pregnant lady? Everything is so much harder as a pregnant lady. It's just unreal. But you are resilient. And you are also exhausted. So we want to make sure that you are having the best you can to keep that baby nourished. I, the baby likes bacon, Shana. I can't help <laughs> It's just how it is at the moment. It likes bacon. <laughs> so. Perfect. Okay, let's jump into Beautiful Cat. <coughs> Yo. Yo, yeah, I've got I've got my my places up on the the my phone and then awesome. the computer. Awesome. Okay, so, um, all right. Now I'm looking at. I may have I may enjoy having a house that is simple and represents my values and beliefs. Confining me to the typical standards of others may not be my style. I may value originality. Mm. I may also like knowing I can rearrange things in my home when I choose about that. I've, I've just, I've recently um, downsized with everything. So I've got very minim, well, minimal, minimal furniture. Um, um, and how does that make you feel? Living. <laughs> Well, I feel at the moment that I'm totally not that because I, I, I'm too embarrassed to eat in front of me that I keep thinking, oh, my God, this is such a mess. And I don't, it's just clutter, you know. Okay. That's, that's me. And unfortunately... How does it make you feel when you look at the clutter? I don't know. Oh, 
I'm just exhausted. Right, right. So as much as you, you say that the clutter is you, could it be that it's an accumulation of past energy that needs mm. to be let go of? Because who knows what's on the other side of that peak? Yeah, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. And it's, it's a safety thing. It's a safety thing. So it would be going back to your childhood, to a time, which I'm sure you've done over the weekend, at which you felt unsafe. And what is, yeah. where, who is it that you feel safe when you have the stuff? Is it, I feel safe internally, I feel safe externally when I have those things. And it's also... I think it's a... Yeah, I think it's that I feel in, safe internally. Mm-hmm. I, I had this incident with my with my mum. She she was o, over the top OCD, and mm-hmm. I think didn't end up like her. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's to you know sort of gone the other direction. But um, yes, I remember this one day. I've got home, and I, I like she she made made me have it, like everything had to be perfect in my room. It just grated with me. But under my bed, I used to have all this stuff. Right? I came home one day. She had thrown everything out, like it was books, and and you know I used to draw back in those days, and I used to. So it all just went under the bed. You couldn't see it but she knew it was there and it pissed her off that she knew that it was there. But with me, it was like, how dare you? And I didn't talk to her for a week Mm -hmm. because it was like, are you serious? I think that's where it all comes from. You know, that I'm just, I'm holding on to this stuff because I I keep going back to that time in my, when I was young, like, I mean, I would have been what, 15 or 16. And Mm. it pissed me off no end. Right. There's some healing work to be done there and forgiving your mum. Yes, yes. There is. And it's so common. And mm. you've now created a wall of stuff to stick yes. it to your mum. <laughs> yes. You've yes. stuck it to your mum for how many years now? And you've mm. got your stuff. So as they're cleaning out your house this weekend, before, yep. before, who did you write your letter to on your Espen weekend? Oh, we haven't done the weekend, darling. We haven't done that yet. Oh, so I have right. But if, but she will be. I know that she will be the person I'm writing to. Absolutely. This weekend, before you do that, clean up. Yep. I would yep. really love. You don't have to share it. I would think you need to write a letter to your mum. Mm. Yep. As before you throw away, because it will make the process easier yeah. and more therapeutic okay okay yeah. can you write a letter to mum yep and and, and it, if you need maybe two one of fuck <laughs> i hate the fact that you did this to me and you ruined my life but you needed it you needed it you wouldn't be the gorgeous human that you are today the self-expressive explosive energetic high beautiful like goddess that you are without what your mum did yeah absolutely and, okay. and look, with like with Jess going through pregnancy at the moment I it was when I was pregnant that and and after Charlotte was born that I fully understood and came to grips with the idea that you know mum did the best that she could at the time and she and and that was just her the way she was so I've had to try and forgive her for a lot of other stuff and mm. I, I, I know, I know exactly what you mean and where you're going with it. And I, I do actually need to write her two letters. Mm. One is the angry me. And then the other one is the understanding, compassionate me. Yeah. You don't have to tell me it. I, I, I'm going to hold you to it. Cause I feel like yep. it's a process that has to happen. Yep. Send me a photo of the letter. I don't need to see the letter, yep. but just yep. like zoomed back and done it. Yep. Yep. Um, because these are the these are the anchor points that hold us. Jess, I'd love to see you do the same thing, to be honest. Yeah. To be honest, I think there's another anchor point there for you with everything you're going through. Um, I had to do it to my mum and my dad. And I actually read mine to my dad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. 
and and he and I have a beautiful relation. I love him, but he left me. He abandoned me. Oh. I wasn't good enough. I've yeah. recently had dad up this way too. Mm. So it's sort of like I had, so when mum and dad busted up, I went through that. I was daddy's girl. So I chased after dad a lot. Mm. A lot. My current situation and probably the last few years, everything was about us always chasing him. And I came to the realization a few years ago that, you know, like Keisha and I were polar opposites. She hated dad. She didn't want anything to do with dad. And now like, even though now they're traveling, but before they were traveling, like she'd go down to Kingscliff and go and spend the weekend with him and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not spending $400 to go down and spend the weekend down there just to get criticized about everything that I've done wrong and all that. So when he came up, I knew that he was around the area and it was sort of that, um, I think my big realization was I told him that we were pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so what do you want to be called? Do you want to be called, pop or a poppy or granddad and he goes oh I, I I think I'd be happy with Ray and I went so your first grandchild you don't even want to be like that that significant part in its life like you don't want to be a grandfather or you don't want to be pop you just want to be Ray mm. right so that cemented a lot of things for me feeling wise with dad Mm. And you know, you know, you know what mum's like when it comes to dad and how bitter. Mum mm. is still just as bitter. Mm. So she secluded herself for the four days dad was up here. It'd be good for you and typical diplomat, typical guardian part of you, your environmental business, everyone yeah. else's business, hone it back in. I think you need to write a letter of cutting the cords to your parents. And like, I just sort of purely said to mum, like mum sort of like typical mum, just like, blah, 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 blah. and I said, at the end of the day, I came to the realization, if he's traveled all the way up here and he can't spend time, time with me, it's not worth it. I'm not going to keep chasing that relationship. That's not there. Mm, we didn't mm. really have a relationship with him growing up because he was too busy doing what he was doing with other people to even care about us kids. So when he said the stuff about having like being called Ray, I'm like, well, in all honesty, he doesn't deserve to be in the child's life anyway, because why, why even try? I'm not going to keep chasing a relationship that's not worth fixing. He came in and saw me while we were at the shop. We had a talk and that's the most that dad and I've spoken in years, in mm -hmm. two, three years. And we had dinner and then two nights later they stayed an extra night and he's like, Oh, do you want to come down for dinner? And we were just like, it's the most I've spoken to dad in years and I felt comfortable with it, but it's still not something I'm going to chase. Like I don't need to chase it. I've got my life and I know where to focus. Even with everything that's been going on personally with like the shop and the stress and everything, when we went to the solicitors yesterday, mum came up to Cairns with me. So coming back, she's in my ear and she's just like, rah, 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 rah. And I just snapped. And then she got the shits and I just left it at that. I'm like, at the end of the day, I've got to process this and deal with this my way too. I don't need to be told all the time, you've got to do this or you've got to do this or you've got to do this because mm. it's not going to work. Mm. And mm. I think these realizations they've taken me a long time and many years to come to, but you know, like being up here too, living separately from mum has been mm -hmm. a blessing because I'm not so self-reliant and I'm not there with her all the time. So I think our relationship has gotten a little bit better, but it's not that constant pressure and it's not that constant in your face sort of shit the thing we have to remember is that the way the world goes is we are meant to birth our children and set them free we are not meant to teach them we are not meant to guide them we are meant to birth them empower them and set them free and yeah. so many parents forget that so many parents hold on to their children as their identity yeah. as their that. being they're not your being you birth them but they are their own being. We've sort of had that realisation 
do with Alicia. So, you know, like a couple of months back, I was talking about the problems we were having with Alicia. Mm, I'm just going to stop the recording because this has gotten very long. Yeah, no, very late. <laughs> so, 